Hello everyone, welcome to the TSG weekly call. As you all know, I believe this is a public call. Anybody is welcome to join and participate. However, you must be aware of the antitrust policy and live by it, the notice of which is currently displayed along with the code of conduct, which is linked from the agenda. With that taken care of, we have a couple of announcements to get us started. Uh, sure. So, um, Rai, I will give you the, let you have the honor since okay. you own kind of those two. Sure. Uh, just a reminder that the uh, we're always looking for content for the Dev Weekly newsletter. And uh, if, you, if your project is doing something cool and let us know, just leave a comment on the uh, wiki page and we'll make sure to get it in there. Uh, the second item here is we have two Mac OS hosted runners for GitHub that I'm using to prove out stuff. One is Intel and one is M1. Uh, it's currently, the Intel one is currently plugged into uh, Aroha. They report that it is much, much faster. Uh, we are using the uh, M1 Mac with Solang to produce uh, Mac LLVM builds. If you would like to experiment with this or work with me on this, uh, reach out to me directly and let's see if we can get like one or two more projects to prove this out. And that's all I got. All right, thank you. Any questions on that point maybe? So far, the people who've had the chance to try it have reported that it actually works much better than the standard CI we have on GitHub. But uh, of course, I don't know how long this will last uh, if we all join, but we'll see. Yeah, it, these are base model you know, uh, Mac minis, so I can't support 500 uh, builds. Right. I, maybe I can support two simultaneous builds. No, that's understood. Thank you. Is there any other announcements anybody wants to make? This is your chance. In the meantime, I saw Troy joined us. Welcome. So we have a full house. All right, if there's no other announcements, then we can move on to the quarterly reports. We got two new reports submitted. It was like yesterday, so I know not everybody may have had a chance to look at them. Um, I think there is one point that is worth discussing. Um, they reported that uh, they are not compliant with the common repository structure. And um, what I find interesting that might be worth discussing is, you know, Sean basically said, well, we're not compliant and don't intend to be <laughs> because we have different, uh, you know, choices we've made. And I was wondering, it seems to me that, I mean, we have like three options. We can ignore it, let them, let it be. We can say, oh, okay, their choice is not unreasonable. We should revise our definition to allow for that variation. Or we could say, sorry, you can't do this. You should comply. Or, you know, you have the burden to convince us uh, if we need to change the definition. Something along those lines, I think, are the kind of, you know, possible ways forward. I see Dano has raised his hand. Go ahead. So the solution to SPDX is both. Um, Hyperledger Basu does both the full text of the license and the SPDX marker. They're not exclusive. So I think that's an easy one to say come in compliance. The release notes and change log I think is a different thing and I'm leaning towards the need a change log file, whether or not it is the change log or pointer, um, just for consistency, because that's the point of these standards is consistency. All right. Anybody else?
everybody feels differently. I mean, so what I'm hearing is Dano is saying, come on, they, we should uh, kind of push them a little bit and say, you're not that far from being compliant. The uh, SPDX headers can be added and the, uh, the release knows like get over, <laughs> just comply. Just to be to be compliant, to be to 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 stick to this idea of having a common repository structure. We can so I mean for now you know we I would necessarily you know frame it into some kind of like order from the TSC to comply, but I would continue you know discussion with Sean and say try to negotiate a little bit and understand if there is not you know, any legal room, uh, any uh, room there for them to, to come along, right? And I see Arun responded. Um, yeah, that's where I got the change lock compliance idea. I think these are totally achievable on their part if they do a little bit, littlest bit of action. Yeah. All right, so I don't see anybody else jumping to speak up. So I think that's the course of action for now. We'll just keep pushing gently and say, come on, come around and be nice. Arun. Hey, um, so because I didn't know, I, I sorry, I don't know the context behind SPDX. So um, if you can share some information about that, that might help. Sure. Uh, SPDX is a very small header at the top of files, which is part of our uh, the Linux Foundation's uh, push towards uh, software supply chain security. It's machine parsable. It's two or three lines at the top of each file declaring what the license of that file is. Um, in the past, we had discussed only changing it as, thank you, Tracy. Tracy put a link in the chat. Um, as people edit a file, add it. Uh, not that people need to make a wholesale set of changes to all files to uh, to inject this this header. So that's that's the context from the Linux Foundation side. This is an effort that's been underway for five or six years. And the motivation is is to try to prevent some variations in the license text that would be maybe difficult to spot because sometimes, you know, documents go through uh, um, some changes and the, the text of the license may be relayed out a bit differently. And then it becomes very hard to see if it has actually changed in any kind of substantial manner. And so rather than taking the risk of you know, having different variations of the text. It's like, well, if you have a simple identifier with an indirection, there is only like, you know, there are fewer versions of the license, the full license text that, you know, exist. And there's just an idea which is very easy to, to identify and, and pass and, and link to the actual full text. It makes things much easier to manage. Does that, I mean, is that enough, Arun? Sure, so I'll, I'll read through this SPDX doc, um, the website that was shared. So I wanted to understand if it was pushed from Hyperledger or if it was from somewhere else. So the context that it came from Linux Foundation and that it's been pushed for the last five, six years, that gives me some information. And um, coming to ad addition of headers, I like the idea that Dano put in that the Besu project currently follows. It basically follows both the structures, so it should be fine. And it's again um, only for newer files that uh, that it is being mandated, not for the earlier parts of code. So it should be fine. I did. And so, by the way, if we have both the uh, SPDX header and the full text. I don't know what happens if there is discrepancy between the two. I would need to defer to legal counsel. I don't know. 
I, I did want to point out before we moved on uh, that the grid, as well as the transact, had the same uh, note here, and Tracy commented about it over here as well. So, yeah, yeah, and it's the same people are behind it, so it's not surprising they're following the same same path, I guess. I suspect we'll find the same thing in all the projects where they are in, the same people are involved. And there are quite a few of them. But all right, let's leave it at this for now. I'm happy to let the discussion on the wiki keep on going for now and we'll you know we'll keep an eye. I don't know if there's any other question. That was the one thing that I noticed that was, you know, I wanted to bring up, but otherwise I'll carry those two reports over to next week and uh, you'll have another chance to comment or ask questions if there is anything. And um, just quickly on Burrow, I have sent an email to Silas a few days ago and I've not heard back from him yet. So I don't know what's up. Maybe, I uh, is there, I mean, is, I haven't looked at Burrow. I don't know how active Burrow is. Is this, uh, is, is this a project that we could consider putting in the, the state for that we put quilt in, which I can't remember the name if it's dormant, yeah, dormant. Thank you. Um, you we said will that, have to see if they really are dormant. Uh, okay. Typically they, and I haven't looked at the insights, uh, website to see what the latest uh, activity is. Okay. Tracy, Tracy, do you have, have you looked? Uh, so GitHub shows that the last uh, merge request was put in 21 hours ago. Um, yeah. So. That's what I expected. They, they, they do work on this code. It's really, you know, their main project, but. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it looks like, looks like it's a little slow, but. Uh, there is some stuff happening. So typically, you know, we'll hear back from Silas and they'll send us a nice report eventually. We just have to be a bit patient. Okay, thanks for looking into that, Tracy. Yes, thank you. All right, anything else on any of these reports? All right, if not, let's keep on going. So regarding the discussions, um, discussion items, of course, the main one is the TSC election, which is coming, coming up pretty quickly. Um, so you must have seen that uh, uh, David uh, sent an email with a link to a page that he has created based on the old one on the previous iteration and uh, with an update in line with what we had discussed last week. And um, so the question now is, I mean, technically speaking, we need to, you know, whether approve this or revise it as necessary so that then we basically have to give the staff the green light to start executing this plan. So, um, I would like to open it to the group here and ask if anybody has any questions, any comments, or can we just approve it? And if David, if you have anything you want to raise, please speak up as well. Tracy. Yeah, so I just, I made a comment uh, in the bottom there that uh, it looks like if we use insights, we are uh, potentially pulling in folks that we wouldn't have pulled in in the past. Um, and so I just want to make sure that we're all aware that that's the case and that we don't have any problems with that. Okay, and uh, I ran this, uh, I got the insights data a few weeks ago. Uh, and then again, recently, and I think there were about 800 uh, people that, that came up as valid who had email addresses. Uh, so it's a little bit more than it was last time. And I think if we use the 
so to your point about the the working group uh chairs um i in the ones in the elections where i was involved i found that we really only got one or two people who weren't otherwise picked up the working groups would working group chairs would send a list and then we would look and those people were already valid um so i i think we're going to have pretty good coverage but yeah, so think, yeah go ahead sorry i just just to clarify um we did definitely get people from the working groups in previous years we have not gotten people who were participating in the sigs um which we will this year because the the insights will gather information from the wiki and the mailing list and the chat channels for SIGs as well as uh, any other sorts of contributions. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily a big deal, but it is a change. And so that's why I bring it up um, for us to, you know, make sure that we're making deliberate choices instead of, oops, I didn't realize that was going to happen. Oh, but I, I appreciate that. I think you're right. Nathan is next. Oh, I was just going to say, I'm glad that Tracy has brought up that this is a change. I think it's a good change. And I would, uh, I don't know if it's something we have to make a decision on necessarily, but I'm in favor of it. So my, the only one that kind of makes me wonder is, is the chat. Does this mean anybody who just ask a question in the chat is included? If I have an email address for them, in insights, the answer is yes. However, um, what I've found is that if you only interact on chat, you are probably not going to show up in insights. So I'm not super worried about that. So you have to explain a bit more, I'm afraid, because so how do people show up just based on the chat? I mean, this is part of what's in the list here. I mean, honestly, I'm a, you know, I, I don't really care. I'm happy to include everybody, but it's it feels kind of like, you know, um, fairly far from the initial target, which was, technical contributors. So this is how they'll show up. So they show up as a source of rocket chat. They have a username. There's no email associated. There's no organization associated. So they basically won't show up if I filter by email. Now, if this person had done something else, uh, made a git commit, they would, they would show up. All right, but so that means, in fact, if all they've done is being in the chat, they're probably not going to show up. Right. They would have to go through extraordinary effort to show up, to only work in chat, and have an email uh, address associated with their profile. There's a way to do it, but I would be shocked if anyone did it. If I if if the person has asked, and so the other one, I guess, is the mailing list, and I see Hot is in the queue. Heart. Uh, hey, I was just wondering, like, do we really think that these people who have like asked a question once are actually going to bother to vote? No, I don't think so. I agree with you. That's why I'm like, well, it doesn't really matter to me, but it's just, you have to acknowledge that's a pretty, you know, it, it's, a, it's pretty far from the initial uh, target. That's all I meant. And uh, so back to the mailing list question. So if I have asked a question on mailing list, for sure you would have my email address, I guess. And then I, I would so. be included. I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. Gary? Oh, uh, sorry, I just uh, unmuted because I can go to my phone and uh, so I'm just going to mute on off my phone because I don't, I don't have a, uh, whatever. Okay. You don't have anything to contribute. 
<laughs> it's all right. No, but so are we cool with that? I feel the same. It's like, well, so somebody shows up on the mailing list as some random question, and now they have they are involved in this. You know, finally, it doesn't bother me. I don't know that they will bother voting, so I can live with it. But you know, somebody we talked about the fact that you know the wording initially is in charter. And we're supposed to, you know, if we wanted to play by the book, we would have to revise the charter to match what we are doing. Mind you, this this is not the only thing. And, you know, our track record shows that we can uh, diverge from the charter without any real problem. But uh, I wonder if that's really a departure from the initial intent. Are we kind of betraying some kind of goal that was set up initially? Um, I would say that if that's the case, then we've been betraying it all along because we've always tried to include as many of the technical contributors as we can um, and cast as wide as a wide as a net as we can because it helps encourage people to feel like they have a stake in the project and participate more. Whereas if we leave them out, it feels like they don't have a stake in the project and, and it feels like we're turning them away. So, you know, I think, like you said, Arnaud, the risks are very low. Those who are not vested in the project and don't have much interest, they aren't going to respond to the ballot email and, and vote anyway. Um, we usually have to pester people to pay attention to those emails. So uh, I, I think it's, it's very low risk. I, it feels like even if it's not in the spirit of the exact wording of the charter, which I, I feel like it is in the spirit of the wording of the charter, it is the same in general as what we've been doing all along the way for the last few years. And um, this makes it easier for the staff because the tools help pick up all the different participants and they don't have to pester the chairs as much. So I agree, but I just want to highlight again, you, you started and you stated technical contributors. And I agree with you that we've tried to make that as wide uh, you know, a net as possible. However, if you know, I would argue that if all you've done is post, you know, to a mailing list asking a simple question, you've not, you know, you don't qualify as a technical contributor. So that's where there's a departure. But you know, for well, all the reasons you, you also cited, I'm okay with it. It's just uh, we should be clear that this is the case. Hey, or, or no, just one thing. So I, I agree with Nathan actually, um, but. To your point, though, right? I mean, yeah, there's going to be some. I mean, I think we don't have to beat this one to death, but just as a side point, I'll play devil's advocate. You could technically argue that somebody posts a question is actually a contributor because maybe that question is contributing to either updating something in the product, updating or whatever. So, I mean, you know, anybody could argue things six, you know, six one way, half a dozen the other, right? Um, but in the end, right, is this really going to, you know, affect anything and does it meet the goal? that we continue to seem to argue, not argue about, try to do year after year after year, even though I haven't been around here, on getting more people in and to vote. So yeah, All right. I, 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 that's, be, that's my take for whatever it's worth, which apparently nothing compared to since you, you know, said that earlier, but um, that's <laughs> whatever it's worth. <laughs> no. Your input is welcome. Thank you, Gary. Let's go to the queue, Tracy. Yep, so uh, paste it in the chat. Uh, what the definition of contributors is. So anyone in the technical community that contributes code, documentation, or other technical artifacts to the code base. Um, I'm wondering if we use the insights but don't include chat or mailing list, uh, but we include obviously code and wiki. Um, even Jira, I think, uh, probably corresponds to something like that. Um, does that does that uh, is that more in line with what the the charter says and maybe gets rid of some of the concerns and why is that even technically feasible? Yeah, that's kind of what I was wondering. Indeed, <laughs> these are the these are the easy ones I can get: code, PRs, Jira issues, and Confluence. Those are the easy ones. Um, the mailing lists and chat are harder to get. They're not on this page. So that's. So it's actually easy for you not to include chat and mailing lists, is what you're telling us? Yeah, it's more work to get them. 
Okay, that's good to know. Hot. Yeah, I mean, as far as the the charter goes, I mean, we are even if we include the chat and mailing list, we are still sort of operating in the spirit of what the charter says. And given that the governing board themselves operates like well outside the charter frequently, um, does it? Like, oh yeah. I mean, they're supposed to post public minutes, and that doesn't happen. Um, so uh, I I'm not too worried about that. If they want to say that, like, we're minorly operating outside of the charter, we can say that, like, well, look at what you guys are doing. You're not even, like, remotely following this thing. So that's not, like, a big point of concern, I think. So, by the way, I did bring that up to the board. and. I was told, if you look at the wording carefully, it says the minutes should be published. It doesn't say it must be published. <laughs> so, but they are looking into possibly publishing at least part of that, that would be felt like, you know, not, not an issue to publish more widely. That's a side note. But okay, so it sounds like now we have two different options. Um, but is, you know, since the whole idea of updating the process was also to make the the process easier for the staff, and Rai just told us it's easier if it doesn't have to include the mailing list and the chat, and arguably this is, I would think, more in line with the charter or what you know the criteria that we have set before. I would be suggesting to keep it to that, keep it to the, the list that hot, uh, the Rai was just showing us before, which does not include chat and does not include mailing list, hot. Um, my one concern is, does this mean that the LF staff is going to have to manually do all the working group stuff again? Because ideally they would not have to do that. I, mean, I agree. We, um, we, I guess we have a decision whether like, So. Let's ask Rai, does, do you know that? Does that include? So uh, if they've made any wiki edits, they're going to be here. And uh, But if they just published on the mailing list, possibly in the group, they would not appear. Sure. So what I was saying earlier was we've done this every year, and the number of people that get nominated by chairs who are not already picked up is, you know, you can count on a single hand. Uh, we could, we still have the election email address. Uh, so we could say, if you don't show up in the tool, if you don't show up in uh, the eligibility check site, then Make an appeal. send an email. Yeah. And I saw that Tracy and a couple of people had their hands up. But they shied away. And I see Dave has come off mute. Dave? Uh, I didn't raise my hand, but I, it sounded like Arno was working towards a proposal. I was going to get ready to second it because I completely agreed with what he said. So, yeah. So, my proposal, given what Bright just said again about the working groups, is to stick to the list that Rai was showing earlier, which does not include the chat and does not include the mailing list. I would second that proposal. So do should we have a vote? Do you want a roll call vote or just a? No, nah, we can just see if anybody, does anybody opposes this proposal? I think we should have everyone give a yay nay. We don't have to do a roll call, but I think we should have it make everyone at least say yes. Yeah, but I can start with the oppose anyway, right? It felt like a without objection thing going on. Sorry. Uh, no, you jumped the gun there. I, I just meant to do it the other way to make sure, you know, if anybody objects already, I was interested to hear it. So I haven't heard anybody opposing the proposal, the motion. Everybody in favor says aye. 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 OK. 
Okay, I heard quite a few. Anybody wants to abstain? Well, I guess this passes then. Thank goodness. <laughs> well, that should make everybody feel happy about the, the this decision, I guess. We heard is that a new is that a new way. record of vote passing 33 minutes into a meeting? I don't know. Probably. But so oh, wait, Tracy has more for us. Yeah, sorry. Uh, can we just make sure we update that first bullet point to include the fact that we're not including chat? Yes, mailing. I agree. We should make sure this is that listed. we're just specific about what we're pulling from the insights tool. Maybe this edit, David. Can you make that edit right away? Because I would like to next agree on this plan. Otherwise, is there anything else about this plan? Anybody? has questions about or wants to comment or you know, uh, change? Or are we good to go? All right, I don't hear anybody. I'm just looking for the unmute. Yep. So just to confirm, make the change around just not pulling the data from mailing list and chat. Is that the change you'd like to see? That's right. Okay, yeah, I can make that. So with that, you know, in the works, it sounds like everybody's happy with the plan. Otherwise, should we have a vote on uh, approving this plan? I second that. All right, thank you. All right, everybody in favor says hi. 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 Aye. 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 Anybody opposes the motion? Anybody wants to object? All right, this motion carries then. All right, we're done for the time being with this election. I won't say the adjective that I had in mind. <laughs> um, So yes, let's move on. So the staff will start executing this plan and uh, and we'll see what comes out of it. If there is no problem, we don't need to get involved again until you know the end. So let's move on to other topics. We have quite a few other topics still in the backlog. And there's one that Arun actually asked me the other day to bring up if we could. So I wanted to take the time we have to look into this. It is about creating a contributor experience working group. So where are we at? Arun, do you want to give us a kind of a update on where we stand? There was quite a bit of discussion a while ago and uh, this thing has been lying there for a while. Right. So this was to evaluate or see how best experience a new contributor would get when they start when they start contributing to Apple Ledger projects, and so there are few um, hurdles that new contributor faces. But the idea was to bring them up as and when those things happen. And meanwhile, there are also multiple six and working groups who are trying to collaborate across each others. They're trying to um, get together and then uh, create, for example, a workshop kind of event where new contributors can get used to the community and then contributing terms, all those aspects. So uh, the idea was not to put any structure around such informal get togethers that are happening within the community. Having more structure would lead to people I think we lost a rune. I was wondering, it sounded like a bit brutal the end there. A bit abrupt at least, I should say. So I see the last comment here from Arun is to re reject this proposal. So I don't know if that was what you want 
Barun, is to to have this voted down. Yeah. So what's interesting is you know he's not saying we shouldn't tackle this issue. He's saying the working group is not the right venue and. I think I would agree with this. So for those who may not remember, who don't know, the difference between working groups and task force is that task force are short-lived and they have a specific goal. Um, and uh, once they have produced the, whatever the deliverable is, they are set to do, to achieve, you know, to produce, um, they dissipate. They, dismiss and so working group on the other end no longer have any deliverables so they are more like discussion forums and um, so on that basis i think he has a valid point that maybe a task force is more appropriate and i've had to, i don't know if this is what arun was going to say and you know i don't want to you know, guess what he was going to say, but I have had some conversations with him. Ryan, I have had some conversations with him. Another wrinkle to add is I think a lot of conversations are happening in the greenhouse task force right now that would be, you know, relevant to a contributor experience, you know, uh, uh, discussion. So we would, you know, I think one conversation we had in our, you know, discussions about this is we don't want to split those conversations right now. I mean, if those conversations are happening in that, ta that task force, let's let that happen so it felt like at least at the very least it was premature to create a, a, a contributor experience group right now while that task force was going on so you know one possible thing would be to hold on any decision on this until that greenhouse task force winds down to see if there's a different home where we want to put you know move those conversations if there's additional things that group wants to discuss mm -hmm. interesting hey, um uh, um, I joined from phone. I'm not sure if I'm still audible. My yeah, laptop we can hear you. Yeah, not. So my laptop restarted all of a sudden when I was speaking. Sorry about that. So I was trying to say that um, I, I heard David speaking right now. And yeah, so the working group and kind of puts structure around how a meeting should be run and how, I mean, it, it also mandates that we elect a chair for that working group and then they follow a structure. So we wanted to keep the informal communication that is happening, the collaboration happening across different groups to continue the way it is happening. However, if any burning issues are brought up, which needs urgent attention, then we decided that, um, I mean, a task force kind of structure is still better. It is short-lived. People know exactly what needs to be done at the end of, let's say, two months or three months, and they come up with some proposals at the end of their task force term. And um, it, it is completely informal that they're not entitled to follow certain structures. They can bring in their own way of working. And that seems to have worked in a couple of cases. So that's where probably we should reject the proposal as of now to create a contributor experience group and move up motion if possible on creating task force. And um, however, one thing that people would like to have help from Hyperledger uh, itself is the, the community resources. And I'm very sure that Rai and or, or any community architect have never said no to utilizing any of the resources. And resources, when I say it could include the confluence pages or it could include mailing lists, um, such things. All right, thank you. And I mean, Rai, I know you created that page, but what triggered I, I, the proposal in the first place? Uh, Brian said, do this. And okay. I, I, I did that. And uh, that was it. So I, I created this page as part of capturing discussions uh, on one of the TSC calls. I don't remember. I'm going to guess that it was last year. Um, I'm going to guess. Well, that that's fine. I mean, yeah. uh, the, the the main point really I was trying to get to is, you know, is there anybody out there, you know, who is adamant about creating the working group instead of a task force eventually? I'm not sure there is. I think so, the answer is no. 
right? So, I mean, I, is there anybody objecting to this idea of creating a task force rather than a working group? I would expect not. And so then there's the question of the timing. Do we create this task force now or do we wait a bit? Did we lose our run again? Yeah, what he dropped off. Between doing it now and waiting, Arno? Oh, yeah, what's the wait for waiting? <laughs> no, um, I mean, in the queue. Gary can go ahead. He was talking. Oh, sorry. I should have just said I raised my hand. Sorry about that. I was just going to say, what's the difference between what's the concern about doing it now versus later? I guess I, I just didn't understand. Apologies if I wasn't clear, but I mean, my two cents on the, the difference between doing it now versus doing it later is we could fracture conversations that are naturally occurring already in the greenhouse task force. I mean, if that's where the conversations have happened, I wouldn't necessarily want to, you know, say, Stop no, it. you can have those conversations here. You need to move them over here. Ah, uh, got you. So you're saying we delay the, the you're, you're not really saying that I got it. You're saying that we may not need this because it's probably it may already be happening organically somewhere else. I got it. I mean, I, can, I mean, it'd be interesting to hear from somebody on the TSE who's been going to those greenhouse task force calls, but a number of things related to contributor experiences are coming up in those conversations naturally, just because how we structure the greenhouse is part of the contributor experience, right? So I know, I don't know if Helen's on the call, but I know there's been conversations about how do we improve, how do we take this information about the new greenhouse, for example, and improve the entry points for a new contributor, right? And to me, that you know, improving the onboarding experience for a new contributor is very much a contributor experience discussion. And that's just organically already happening in that forum. So I wouldn't want to say, no, you can't discuss this there. You have to go to a different meeting at a different time, you know. Right. No, I think that's a, a valid point. Art is next. You're on yeah, the so, task force. Yeah, I've been going to these meetings. Um, and I guess uh, who, my, my question was, is there someone who's driving this like working group slash task force? I mean, I don't really think it matters whether it like, I think it can start as a task force. And if the task force decides that it should be longer term, then their like recommendation can be, it should be a working group. Right. Um, so yeah. I think that that's like a totally fine thing to do is if they say that like, this should be ongoing, um, it should be, you know, we can accommodate that. Um, yes, to address the and to address the point on the uh, greenhouse task force, it is affecting a lot. It is discussing in a lot of the contributor experience. Um, but I guess is is this working group or task force going to be focused on sort of the new contributor experience or like the uh, old contributor experience? Because the greenhouse group is mostly focused on new contributor experience. Yeah, but I think that's the idea. And so I think the basically the, the way forward is pretty straightforward in my opinion is that we say, okay, we're not going to create this working group. We're going to say, hey, if you're interested in this topic, just join the greenhouse task force. Although, uh, and by the end of the greenhouse task force, we'll have to decide whether we're done or if we want to create a new task force that's specific, you know, specifically uh, uh, focusing on that aspect. That would be my proposal. I don't, I, I don't think we should just, you know, say no to this proposal and not give any pointers because we would be missing I guess the intent Brian had to, to asking Rai to create this was to not lose this, you know, entirely. So we have to have some kind of pointer to, you know, the resolutions got to be, we don't need to create this because the discussion is happening in that task force. And then when that task force ends, you know, if needed, we can create another one. Does that sound reasonable to everyone? Anybody objects to that idea? We can make a motion, but 
Okay, since nobody objects, let's make it official. So I will make a motion, which is to not create the contribution experience working group, but uh, defer the discussion to the current greenhouse task force. And when, um, like I said, when the greenhouse task force ends, if the discussion on contributor experience is not over, there's a need for more, we will consider creating a task force dedicated to that topic. We can do a quick uh, vote. We seem to be, <laughs> we, we've been doing well so far. I see Rai has already written resolve, so it might be uh, just, uh, administrative at this point but uh, let's go from let's go for it so I second your proposal thank you anybody in favor says hi 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 all right Anybody opposing the motion? Anybody wants to abstain? All right, the motion carries, thank you. So that's the end of what I had on the agenda. We have 10 minutes left. Is there any other topics anybody wants to bring up which can be from the backlog? We still have quite a few items uh, or um, anything else for that matter. If anybody has a desire to bring a topic, now is a good time. I do have to point out that, you know, we tried to do a cleanup of the backlog a while ago and there were people who basically said, oh, let's not close this. I will come up with a proposal to close this and we're still waiting for those. It would be good to see some something happening. Otherwise, we just lose track and those things just stay there and looks like we're just, you know, that I don't think they bring any value in having them there. Is there any issue? In, oh, Arun, please. Hey, thanks, Arnold. So um, now that we are discussing an open item. So I observed that in the repo linter, we are saying it's not mandatory that you implement a repo linter. So, um, which is fine for project. Like, so how do we govern the repositories in such a case, right? So, being having seen so many repositories at a hyperledger level, and how do we confirm that all the projects are running fine? So, do we still need to have a mechanism? through which either the staff or the TSC can identify and notify those projects, hey, you know what, you, know, you claim that everything is fine, but we observed this discrepancy. Maybe you forgot, or maybe it was because you assumed something else. So you may need to fix that. So, um, what I'm trying to suggest is, do we still need a mechanism of identifying those automated way of identifying? just given the number of repositories that we are having currently. So the status quo is that, you know, <clears throat> we tried to use Ripple Inter, as you know, and it didn't work out well. So we decided to forego that and not make it mandatory. At this point, we are relying solely on self declaration you know people tell us in the reports like just like what we we're discussing earlier with grid and transact as to where they are at with implementing the common repository structure and that's it we are not i i you know i guess we're not uh we're not the police in that way we're not we don't have any tools we go by what people tell us are you saying we can't trust them? We have to, we should have some other tool of one kind or another to try to 
assess whether the claims are valid or not. And I understand so it may I, not be like, you know, that they are trying to screw with the, the system. They may just not realize they are not compliant, but. Right, let's, let's go with that assumption that they're not trying to um, spoil the system, that they're just forgetting to do something or maybe their understanding is a little different from rest of the people. So let's go with that understanding. And I'm, actually, I agree with you and I disagree with you and, and because it had multiple statements in it. What I agree upon is that we as a TSC should have a governance mechanism. So it is fine we trust the project, but we should still have a mechanism of governing it and where I disagree is so I mean it's I don't know if you want to term it as policy but um, I mean that's I feel that's a responsibility of TAC rather than calling it as like being police of of all these reports I mean uh, being police of all these things right I would I consider it as a responsibility than than um, Terming it other way. I I I I, pres I understand where you're coming from, but I think there's a real technical challenge, which you know, unless you have a solution to, we're going to be stuck with the status quo because it's not like we gave up. We didn't want to try. We did try at least Ripple Inter. So if it's not Ripple Inter. It's another tool. I mean, sure. So these, I mean, since these are all publicly available repositories, and I have had some hands-on with uh, GitHub APIs in the past for doing for for building other tools um, the, with, within Apple Ledger. So I can give it a try and see if it. I if I can do two things. Maybe probably just see if Repolinter itself can be used, or if we it, if it is easy for us to build our own tool to mark these requirements. I can give it a try. I mean, uh, is that overkill? Sorry, I raised my hand. Anybody else? Thank you. Sorry about that. I can't see. All right. Uh, I, is it overkill? I mean, at the end of the day, right? Half of these things were designed to have a more common experience so that people could contribute to repositories in a similar fashion, right? If I recall on many of these, that's not like the badging and the other stuff, right? But so, like, yeah, projects can. Look, if we have automation, that's great. I, I'm always good for automation, and I would say you warn people, right, or whatever, right? But um, at the end of the day, right, if users start complaining, if somebody starts contributing to multiple repos and like, hey, why isn't this one standard or whatever, that seems to be like more than us having to be the audit police on this stuff. Anyway, just my two cents. Again, looking right, at the nobody. intent, unless I'm missing the intent of why we, did, why we were trying to do this in the first place. Thank you. Any other opinions? How do people feel about this? I guess Arun is volunteering to try to develop a tool and he's asking whether we'd be interested in, you know, using a tool if there was one. Right, and we don't need to really ask projects to do anything. It would all be centralized that we just get a report at the end saying that, hey, these are the repositories, this is missing these things. And projects really don't have to do anything. Well, so I don't hear anybody or see anybody jumping saying, yeah, this is a great idea. So maybe this is not where you should spend your time is what I'm getting from this. I think in practice, you know, if there is some discrepancy, we'll address it on an ad hoc, uh, ad hoc uh, way and that's it. And if it's not found, well, maybe it's not, it's probably not that important. I mean, those things are, you know, 
they are nice to have, but they are not like it's not like the world is stopping. Uh, if there's a discrepancy in one repo, it doesn't break really anything. Anybody wants to say otherwise or has more to say on this? Okay, I don't see any hand up. So that's what I take from this, Arun. Okay. Um, I suspect it's not the answer you wanted, but that's the answer you got. <laughs> <laughs> sure, so yeah, it's kind of ambiguous statements that we are making. At one hand, we are asking reports to be main the, the quarterly reports to have this information. Hey, are you following these structures? Because we mandated it um, through some decision-making process. And now we are saying it's fine to break them. Yep, no, I, I see your point. All right, well, we're getting close to the end. Maybe people can noodle on that thought. I'm happy to close the call on this. I do want to point out there was the badging. I think is I feel bad about that one, but you know we I know we spent quite a bit of time. Dano in particular spent quite a bit of time developing the badging proposal. Seems like everybody was interested in it, and when it came to experimenting, you know nobody really wants to. Uh, Dano is the only one that I know of who's actually done so. And uh, we will have to try and make a decision on whether, okay, this was again, uh, something we thought would be nice, but the reality is just adds more work that people are not willing to do. But uh, we should at some point make a decision to either move this forward or abandon it. Anyway, it's not for today. I just wanted to bring it up because when I look at the, uh, you know, at the backlog, this is the most glaring one to me. That's like, oh yeah, we really ought to close this at some point in one way or another. All right, we're out of time. I will uh, stop it at this. Thank you all for joining and we'll talk again next week. Goodbye now. Bye.